Okay, so um, today is the 17th of May 2015 and this video shows an example of a Celtic cross spread. I'm going to give an exa a answer question and use all 10 cards. So I'm not going to be doing a spread for a person because I've watched videos um, set up like that where the reader answers somebody's questions and I find it not that interesting and I get bored mainly because we're not the person that the reading is about. So I do have a question and um, it's a kind of general one and it came from a conversation with somebody I met on a train back from Toronto one night. So I, I didn't know the person but we got into conversation and he was telling me that the company um, in that he works for in their industry, they have trouble keeping good women um, in higher positions. They develop these women develop expertise and contacts over time for a few years, but then they want to families and they have to take time off. But when they come back, the hours are still demanding, and the women really can't f juggle um, looking after children with the requirements of the work. So the company loses people all the time that they would like to keep, be partly because they're good at their job. So the question that I asked was, what can the company do to keep good women? And it's deliberately a bit vague so that we can answer completely and so that we could go off at tangents if required. And what I did was, um, before I did the reading, I picked a card in advance because I wanted to get a comment on whether the question whether it was the, the question was worth answering. And I could have got the reverse devil or something else that means don't bother, you know, it's not going to work. But instead I got the ace of baton, so the answer is yes, something can be done. So I think it's important to think about what we want from the answer. And if I can illustrate it this way, let's say somebody is struggling with mathematics, right? So one one possible approach is to look at the kind of questions that they're having trouble answering and go over several examples with them and show them the solutions so that the person can then figure out how to do a problem on their own. The thing is though that math is, is linear and this means if you don't understand the early points you won't understand the later ones. Right? If you can't add and subtract you can't do calculus. Right? So a better approach with um, somebody struggling with mathematics is to determine where the person is weak or what they're having trouble understanding. Then make sure that they understand the earlier points that they're building on with the current uh, set of problems. Make sure they see the early points, then they're going to be able to answer the question because it's like they've got a more complete understanding. So in the same way, we can ask this question about how does the company keep the good women and we can look to the spread to get an idea of what's going on. So we can select actions or attempt, or so the company can select actions or attempt solutions that have a better chance of success. Because there may be many apparent solutions to the problem, but some won't work and some solutions are better than others. And we can look at the cards that are chosen to point us in a useful direction. Because we're not looking for a magical, you know, conjuring the solution out of thin air answer. Okay, so with, with, this, with these 10 cards, there's always going to be more to say, but I'll sort of go through it quickly and talk about what seemed to me to be the main point so that you can then make sense of your own readings and your, the spreads that you do for your people. So I shuffled for a while and I got, the first card was it shows the atmosphere surrounding the question and I got the sun reversed. Okay, so it's the sun. And we know everything revolves around the sun. Okay, but the card is upside down. So it's like there's nothing to revolve around. This is the atmosphere surrounding the question. There's nothing to revolve around. There's no central directing force. There's no direction. They the company and the women, they're operating without a plan and they're in a disorganized situation. So it's going to be hard to find, to get and find a direction because nobody's in charge. So if there are 10 people involved, um, you're going to get find 10 different points of view because no one's running things and this is an awkward atmosphere with the sun reversed. 
Second card's the opposing force, and I got the Ace of Batons, and the way I look at it, it was the, eight of, the Ace of Batons reversed. This could be good, you know, it might be good, because it's an Ace that shows a new beginning, and this is what the company's looking for, a fresh start to keep women um, coming back and willing to return to work after childbirth. So it, th there's an ace, so there's a possibility of a new start, but they're up against a situation of people not really wanting a new beginning, right? Because the ace is reversed, and it's also the opposing force. They may say they want an improvement, a new situation, but they aren't going to be that willing to make a new start or to set things up so that a new beginning is possible. The suit is Batons, and that represents energy and enterprise. But it's as if, because the ace is reversed and because it's the opposing force, it's a bit like the will is not there to make it happen. The energy isn't there to make it happen. So the first thing you've got to do is get people excited about the possibility of improvement and show how everybody benefits. And again, it's going to be difficult. The next two cards deal with the past. So it should in some way describe what's been going on. So the third card is the foundation. And here we found, or here I got, the Four of Pentacles. So we've got the fellow sitting holding and he's got the feet, the coin below his feet and one on his head. So coins represent money and values. But as we can see from the picture, people are attached to their own values. And this kind of situation, or the, the situation shown by the picture, it looks quite fixed. So it's not changeable, or it's not going to be easy to introduce changes. So what, and this is the past, the foundation. What's been going on has been going on for a long time. And because it's been going on for a long time, it seems like it's the only way. You know, that's how it's always been done. This is the way it's, it is going to be done. And it's as if the setup itself, the arrangement, the current arrangement, doesn't see the need to change. So the fourth card shows what's passing away. And here I've got the Ten of Pentacles reversed. Right, so it's a ten for the end of a cycle and the possible beginning of a new one, but it's upside down. As if they get to an end point, but then they keep repeating the impasse or they come up against the same obstacle time and again. So it's as if the fixity in the Four of Pentacles and the Foundation led to a kind of endlessly repeating, unsatisfactory end of a cycle, the Ten of Pentacles reversed. The, 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 the Four of Pentacles led to an unsatisfying result. Nobody's really happy. It hasn't, the, the Four of Pentacles hasn't produced success. There's no continuity from generation to generation because we can look at the picture and see the young woman and the child and the guard and the old fellow right so maybe there's it indicates there's been a certain loss of income as well because it's pentacles for money and the women who left would have contributed to the income of the company and their expertise may be represented by the old man who's older and wiser and knows what he's about. That expertise of these women has been lost. So the fifth card shows what may come, and I got the Empress reversed. So the Empress is female. So it looks like it's telling us about the women, a, a possible future for the women. They're not going to be happy, the Empress reversed. They're, they're not going to feel appreciated or valued. And they're also not going to be... A, an empress is somebody in charge. So the empress reverse, they're not going to be allowed to make decisions. They're not going to be allowed to be in charge. Their importance, even though the board knows that the women are important and would like to keep them, their importance isn't going to be noticed or accommodated. And it's a, the empress is a major trump and it's reversed. So it's as if... The women want to have a serious say, though they ought to be obeyed, right? Because they're represented by the Empress. If the card had been upright in what may come, then consulting the women, the, the women would have made sense and would have brought benefits. Um, or because an Empress is somebody in charge, if the card had been upright, then asking the women to provide a solution would have worked, but not in the current atmosphere. The sixth card shows what will come, and I got temperance reversed. So if you, temperance could be tempering metal. 
If you temper metal, you make you burn off the impurities to make it stronger, right? Which is good. But this card is reversed. So the sixth card shows the future, the immediate future. So the immediate future or the first results or the first steps towards a solution don't bring about a transformation or a burning off of impurities and a strengthening of everybody's position. Um, temperance might also make us think of the temperance movement, um, but it's reversed. So it's as if there's going to be no moderation in the next step. People are attached to their positions and their attitudes, and it's as if they're sort of entrenched in what they think and what they believe, all of which makes change difficult, if not impossible. The seventh card shows a present position, and here I got the Queen of Cups reversed. So it's a queen, right? So the women are in a weak or subordinate position because it's a queen who ought to be to have some say, but it's reversed. So the women don't have any say. It can also be indicating that the men don't understand the women. Um, at the same time, because of the nature of the Queen of Cups, who can be manipulative, the women are not going to be manipulated or sweet-talked into anything. They're going to be quite strict in their own way. There ought to be transparency and honesty in the negotiations between the women and the board so that a solution can be found. But um, if one or both sides say what they think the other side wants to hear, it's not going to work. That tactic does work sometimes where you tell the person what they want to hear and they're happy and they cooperate, but it's not going to work in this case. The eighth card shows the influence of other people. And here I got the chariot and this looks good. You know, it's a major trump and it's upright. So the indication is that other people can give useful and valuable insight into the situation and come up with prop, uh, with solutions to the problems. They can make, they can help, they can make good suggestions for how to deal with the problem. And these other people, what are they? They could be academics, right? So the answer may be in a research paper or in research that has been done or in a book about, and I'm thinking because the, the chariot was originally a war chariot, and war is conflict. I'm thinking that maybe there's some kind of, so if, if people would examine conflict resolution proposals or conflict resolution techniques, that can be how they would find the answer to their problem. Also, if you look at the card, there's somebody driving the vehicle. And this is in contrast to the earlier indications of nobody being in charge. So it's a bit like, if they want to solve the problem, they need an outside arbitrator, somebody outside the company um, who can who can make decisions or who can move things forward rather than expecting the members of the board who are on the inside to regulate themselves. So somebody from the outside is put in charge of finding and implementing a solution and driving the situation forward because a chariot Find somebody or get somebody to know the, what the destination is and then figure out a map on how they're going to get there. The ninth card shows the hopes and fears and it, here I got the Eight of Swords which shows the, the person trapped and blindfolded by the sea. So these are the expectations. Everybody imagines they're going to get trapped. So the current bosses don't want to give up power in case they get stuck with something they don't want. The women can't imagine improvements for their situation. So this they think they're going to be left subordinate and having to make concessions. So people are not optimistic about the future, about there being a possible solution. And the 10th card is the final outcome, and I got the hanged man. And this is a major trump, but it's a card of suspension and delay. So it looks like trying to find a solution won't work the first time around. Right, there's going to be a delay, it, uh, or it's going to take longer than expected. So the people need to be patient and to try certain things. If it works, good. If it doesn't work, tweak it or change it and keep working at it. Because the card is upright and it's a major trump. So I think it's worth doing to get uh, in the beginning, even if it doesn't work, at least you're getting the ball rolling. So discuss 
what is required and discover what the actual issues are that both sides are concerned about. So I, I know I've been rushing. I need to keep an eye on the time. Um, so that was a quick run through of the cards that came up. There's always more to say. And if there are comments or questions over the next few days, I'll do a follow up dealing with the points that you've raised um, and I'll upload it next week. Otherwise, there'll be something else next week. But I'm not sure at this point what it's going to be about. So in the meantime, uh, that was a bit rushed. But anyway, thanks for watching and have a good week. Okay, bye bye.